Hello guys, my name is Piros Katz and today we're going to see how we can implement our own Oven Dispatcher. Now, if you want to use Mediator notifications to publish your domain events and you don't want your domain to reference Mediator, I've already made a video on how to do that and I'll put the link in the description below. Having said that, let's go and see what I have in my project. I have a domain folder that represents our domain project and uh, in my events I have a domain event which is actually an abstract class and it's empty for simplicity. I have a customer created domain event that uh, takes in the constructor as a parameter the full name of a customer that uh, has been created and I have an interface I has domain event and uh, whoever implements that interface needs to have a list of domain events as a property. In my end of this folder I have a customer that implements the iHas domain event interface and it has a GUID as an ID, a first name, a last name, a list of domain events and a constructor that uh, we initialize our object and when we initialize our object uh, we add in the events a new customer created event and we pass as the full name, the first name and the last name. Now in my controllers I have my customer controller in which I inject a customer repository and uh, we have um, a post and point that uh, we create a customer and return OK. Now my customer repository, as you can see, it actually holds all the customers in a public static list and um, in the create async we just add uh, the customer that we receive to that customer. Now I also inject a an, uh, dispatcher but we're going to get there in a second. Finally, let's go to our event handlers and we have the customer created event handler one that waits for one second and then uh, logs that the customer, uh, the full name of the customer has been created. And I have a customer created event handler two uh, that also waits for one second and the logs say, uh, Congrats, you have a new customer. Now, I also have an event dispatch folder and I have four files in here, they are all empty. So I have an I event handler, an empty for now interface, an I dispatcher, which uh, we previously saw that uh, I inject in the customer repository, the dispatcher, which is uh, going to be the implementation of that I dispatcher, and I have a static dependency injection class with an I dispatcher extension method, and in there we will register our dispatcher. Okay, first things first, let's go to our I dispatcher and in here the method that we want our dispatcher to implement is a task we will call that uh, dispatch async and uh, it will take a generic event so let's call that event and also let's say a cancellation token cancellation token that will be equals with default and now we need to add the constraint of course that our team uh, that our team needs to be a domain event. Okay, now our dispatcher complains because we don't have implemented that method, so let's go and do that and leave it there for now. And let's also go to our event I event handler, and uh, that uh, interface will be implemented for our event handlers. So it will have a generic that uh, actually it's going to be again a domain event so uh, where t is a domain event and the domain event uh, handlers will implement one method it will be a task we will call that handle async and it will take as a parameter uh, that domain event so t event and a cancellation token cancellation token Okay, and let's fix the typo. And also let's set that to its default value. And now we can go to our customer created event handlers and have them implement the I event handler of customer created domain event. And now if I go and remove that handle async method, we can see that that complaint. So let's put it back and let's copy that and put it in the customer created event handler too. Okay, and now let's go and uh, register the dispatcher and the event handlers. 
so we'll go to our dependency injection class uh, I have already installed a nugget package uh, called Scratter uh, we have talked about that um, in this channel I think it was in um, on the creation of a custom mediator that we made a while ago so let's go and register the dispatcher and the event handlers first of all we will register our dispatcher as singleton so services dot at singleton i dispatcher and then the dispatcher okay and now we need to scan in our assembly for our handlers so we're going to say services dot scan uh, from assemblies from assemblies and we will pass the assembly that we have and then we need to add classes oh i missed that here okay let's put that in here add classes and uh, we need the ones that are assignable to the event handler so I'm going to say c assignable to and the type will be the type of i event handler okay and we need to register them as implemented interfaces so as implementing interfaces and let's say with scope lifetime okay and uh, that's all that uh, will actually scan our assembly to find all the classes that uh, implement the I event handler and will register each of them with their interfaces with scope lifetime. And now finally let's go to our dispatcher. Okay, now first we're going to need to get uh, the event handler so for that we are going to create a scope so using var scope oh and first we need to inject the service provider so private read only i service provider service provider okay so var scope equals with service provider dot create scope all right and now we're going to need the type of uh, of that event handler so we're going to say var handler type equals with type of i event handler and then make generic type and the type will be the type of that event that we get so event dot get type because let's actually go first to our customer repository and in here after we add the customer we will uh, go through the events of the customer so customer events and uh, that uh, will be an event and for each event we need to dispatch that so dispatcher dot dispatch async and we will pass that event okay so let's go back to our dispatcher okay now that uh, we have the type let's go and get all the services of that type so var handlers equals with scope dot service provider dot get services and let's pass the type so in our case uh, the type uh, will be i event handler of customer created event and the handlers will be the customer created event handler 1 and the customer created event handler 2 so let's fix a typo handlers ok and now let's go and iterate through that handler so for each handler in handlers we need to invoke the handle async method so let's get the method info so var method equals with handler type dot get method and then we need to pass the name of the methods so we're going to say name of i event handler of t dot handle async you could also just uh, 
write it uh, inside the string, but I think that's more safe. Now that method info has an invoke method, so method method that we know that's not null dot invoke, and now we need to pass uh, two things. The first is uh, the instance that we want to invoke that method on and uh, all the parameters that the method uh, takes in the form of an object array. So the instance is the handler of course. And now let's say new object array and let's pass the event and the cancellation token. And we know that uh, that's an, a task and we can await that. So let's say await and let's cast that to a task. And we know that it's not null. And let's make that async as well. Okay, and now let's debug our application to see if it has the behavior that it wants. But first of all, let me tell you that in my program.cs, I have already registered my dispatcher. Okay, let's go back to our dispatcher. Let's put a breakpoint. Let's debug our application. I have Postman open and I have already created a request. So let's send that. Here we hit our breakpoint. Uh, as you can see, my handler type is a uh, of type I event handler of customer created event. My handlers now, they are two. It's the customer created event handler one and the customer created event handler two. Okay, so let's now hit continue to see what will happen. Okay, and if I go to my console, as you can see, customer spear scratch has been created and congrats, you have a new customer. Let's do that one more time. And as you can see, we have a delay from uh, one published event to another. And that's because as our method is right now, uh, it uh, awaits for its uh, handler to handle that event separately. Now, maybe you don't want to do that. You want uh, to await them all together. So let's go and do that as well. So actually, let's create a new list of tasks so we can add its uh, task in there and then await for them all together. So I'm going to say var tasks equals with new list of task. Okay, and now in here, instead of awaiting that method, I'm going to add it in my tasks. So tasks.add. Okay, and, uh, and now we can say await task dot when all and pass the tasks okay now maybe you have something in a higher level to catch all that all the exceptions that uh, may be thrown but when we're waiting for a lot of tasks to complete it the exception that uh, you get maybe won't be what you need and actually Amihai Mountain Band has a video about that and um, I'll put that in the description uh, but uh, let me show you how you can deal with that and give a short explanation after. So we're going to say that var when all equals with uh, task when all and we will pass the tasks. Okay and now we need to have a try cut block so try and then cuts and we will cut the exception and in here we will await all of our tasks so await when all okay and uh, in here we can have all that exceptions that uh, maybe have thrown so let's say var exceptions equals with when all dot exception dot inner exceptions and let me demonstrate the what's that very 
fast let's go to my customer creative event handler and let's throw an exception so throw a new exception and that will be exception one and let's copy that and in the customer creative event handler let's throw an exception two let's debug that and let's hit that endpoint again okay let's continue and as you can see we have an exception and uh, the exception in our case is the exception one but we have also an exception uh, two from our second handler so if i step over as you can see now in my exceptions i have two exceptions i have the exception one from the first handler and the exception two from the second handler and uh, at that point you can uh, log them or handle them however you want to handle them okay that's all i had for this video if you liked it please like and subscribe thank you for watching and have a nice one